This broadcast is appropriate for all ages, right here on Hashtag We Are Movie Club. It's time for Scary Movie Squad. Salutations, I am camera, I am conversation ready. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I don't know why I moved the camera. Um, Greeds, this is where we talk about the scary movie of the week. Uh, we're going to do Get Out today. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like it's Crypt Keeper nonsense. Or what was it? Tales from the Crypt? I think that's what it was. Ridiculous, preposterous, indubitably. Um, so. This is not like a scary movie, like a monster movie. This isn't like The Grudge or Ringu, uh, or Ring, The Ring, The Ring. Uh, this is definitely a psychological thriller type aspect, um, but it does it so well. Like, this is probably the best movie we've done on Scary Movie Squad all year long. Granted, it's not necessarily like what I like out of a scary movie, like The Descent, uh, which is in my tops of scary movies because it basically nails it. Uh, but this is a great psychological thriller, like leaning towards Saw levels uh, without like doing the gory nonsense that Saw is famous for, uh, even though it's not the really the, the best parts of it. So I got to say, I really got to take my hat off to this, not that I'm wearing a hat, uh, to this movie. Um... The other aspect that kind of plagues it, um, which I don't know if it's made it more or less popular, is that this is being touted as a black movie. Uh, I hate coloring people. Uh, we, we're all we're all humans. If, if that's hasn't changed, we're all sentient. If that hasn't changed, uh, then I, there's no conversation to be had for me. But respecting that other people feel differently. <laughs> uh, some people feel this is a black movie. Um, while I'll concede that there's a strong uh, black protagonist uh, who does a fantastic fucking job. Um, I don't think this is a black movie. I think this is a uh, white people movie um, from that perspective. Uh, if anything, because this is about crazy white people, not about crazy black people. Um, I'm not trying to steal the thunder or anything like that. Please don't go overboard. Um, my point is, is that, uh, <laughs> he's the good character and all the fucking horrible, uh, rich. And that's more the point that they're, they're affluent. They're, they're rich and crazy than anything else. Um, but, uh, and, and I'll even concede to a point it's, it's a black movie in the racist perspective of upper class white people who uh, don't know what to, uh, to do with their all, all their money and happiness. Um, when you have the ability to have anything you want, you want nothing more. Um, you get bored, you lose your mind because you're not supposed to ever do that. You're always supposed to be ser searching for the next thing. Please never let go of that thing. You'll become crazy like these fucks in this movie. Um, but... Uh, I, 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 so, this is, <laughs> what are you knocking over the lights for? You dickhead, come here, come be on camera, be cute. Um, she's like ramming the microphone, she's ramming the lights. I don't know if you just want attention or what. Um, where she wants me to stop talking about stuff and get on talking about the movie because that's what matters. Um, but it's, it's just, this is another one of those movies where I put my foot in my mouth because it's impossible to talk about this thing that I don't recognize, but I recognize that other people recognize it, um, and it's very important to them, so I try not, I honestly try not to offend, uh, but if you're offended, <laughs> I can't do much more for you past the initial try. Um, so, what did you think of Get Out? You didn't care. Okay. Um, see? Cats think all humans are crazy. Because they're... We're just big cats. But we're furless. And cr and we do weird things. Like step on them in the dark. Um, <laughs> okay. So... Uh, opens on a guy on a dark street. And he gets kidnapped. Um, it's a really... Kind of ominous way to, to start the movie. It reveals a lot about the, the upcoming plot. 
It's a great establishing shot because it's short. They don't drag it out. They get right to the point. They kidnap some guy off the street. Um, and then, of course, we, we get to see him later. It's not a secret. I think it's even in the commercial. Or the trailer, sorry. Um, there's too many damn credits at the beginning of this. For a movie that nails the timing and pacing and everything else so right, uh, there's way too many credits. Um, yeah, see, even she thinks there's too many credits. Um, so, and then we, we open on an apartment. Uh, opens on a guy in a towel. Uh, mixed with a lady getting breakfast. I don't know how you're supposed to connect those two things <laughs> with an opening montage and no introductions. But she shows up uh, to the apartment and kisses him. So we, we get to establish that they're together. He's packing. Um, he asks if they know that he's black. Because apparently that's the thing you got to warn people about. And I'll be honest, if like that happens in my case, I'm not warning shit. Be like, no, 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 don't be racist. Um... Oh, I can leave. It's fine. Uh, if you're just going to be racist, it's fine. Um, uh, damn. But, um... Um, so... There's a weird... Tr oh, yeah, so... So, they are going to harp on that for a little bit, because it's, it's part of the point. It's, part, it's supposed to get you accustomed to the idea of thinking about race from a position that isn't yours because statistically you're not an upper class white person that's watching this movie because those people uh, are too busy hunting the rest of us for sport th to watch movies um, that's what I'm talking about when I say upper uh, upper class like up up like so much money they hunt other people for sport type people like Bill Gates rich <laughs> Like, he literally has so much money, he, he can't get rid of it fast enough. Um, and he's done great things with it. Don't get me wrong. Um, so, they drive, and they have uh, have a phone call with their TSA friend, which I think his name is Wyatt. Um, <coughs> I'm not even going to double check that. I'm that confident. So, um, something flies out of the woods. Uh, I'll be honest, it looked like, uh, like a flying squirrel or something. It didn't look like a friggin' deer. But it takes out the mirror... Uh, scares the shit out of them because they're not used to having deer jump out of the woods at them. Um, he goes to investigate. Sure enough, it's a deer. Um, and the police come because they call the police. Which is stupid. But you've got to call somebody and I guess it's animal control as the cop points out. Because um, somebody's got to do cleanup if you're not going to. Now, if you're going to tie it to the hood of your, or the roof of your car and drive away, that's another thing entirely. Um... And the police want to see his license, even though she was driving. She reported the incident. He really has nothing to do with anything other than he's present. Um, and it is bullshit uh, that they want to see his license, and they can't force you to do that. Uh, this is not uh, a, what is it called, a detention state. Uh, no one can compel you to uh, reveal your ID without probable cause or um, arresting you in suspicion of a crime. Now, they can illegally arrest you in suspicious of a, suspicion of a crime and then look at your ID, which has happened to some people, even celebrities, and then after seeing their ID, uh, they have been released and given an, uh, a lackluster apology. Um, and, and I don't... I don't that's, that's not it at all. If you're harassing citizens, you're no longer a policeman. You're a, uh, a bully in a uniform. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you quit. Or you're a dirty cop, which uh, is worthy of execution as far as I'm concerned. No sympathy. Um, okay, so I, I went on a tangent there, didn't I? Uh, buh, 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 buh. So the cop is a triple dick on so many levels. And then he bitches about the, the taillight being out and the side view mirror. Um, I, I honestly thought he was about to bash a light and be like, you get that fixed now. Uh, but I mean, the whole point of this scene, because I could just do without it personally, um, is to establish again, per someone else's perspective. If you can't hold someone else's perspective on racism in this case, 
or blacks or whatever you want to call it, call the situation, then you're going to have a hard time piecing together uh, how how the movie's working in the story. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so they finally get to their destination. He meets the parents. They're relatively cool. Um, they do a tour of the house and everything and the grounds. Um, so dad takes them uh, to the gazebo because... Um, Apparently that's what you do when you have too much money. You, you make buildings that are incomplete uh, outside your house. Um, yeah, I'm not saying it's not pretty. I'm just saying it's weird. Um, but on the porch there's this very obvious uh, tap, tap, tap. Um, when I say tap, 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 it's uh, her clinking on the side of her glass. Um, which... I don't know how far in I want to spoil what, honestly, because it's a, but it's just very obvious in the moment. It's like, well, what's that about? Um, and then it just continues on. Um, but the the family bonds and they talk about stuff. Uh, they talk about his hypnosis because that's the mom's job. Uh, Chris opts out of being hy- hypnotized. Um, <laughs> the black servant lady, because at this point we don't, I don't think we have a name for her, and if we did I, I didn't catch it because they're not prominent enough about it um she kind of has an episode she zones out she lurches back to reality it's all super obvious for the audience's sake um and she gets told go lie down get some rest and then she responds with i think i will now having talked about hypnosis seeing the very obvious trigger tap on the glass um, and it's not so much like the sight or anything, it's the sound, it's hearing it. Usually, uh, hypnoti- uh, hypnotized people are done so, um, audially, not so much visually. There's another, there's different methods to doing things, um, but I don't think that, uh, a audio hypnoti- hypnosis, hypnotization would work on me. I think I would need a visual, uh, stimulus of some kind, or visual programming, which... The most uh, <coughs> um, successful ones look like brainwashing, so there's that. Um, but I just I just don't hear and learn very well. I filter things out through ears a lot. Um, so <coughs> it's interesting to see those things, these very obvious triggers, having like just knowing enough about hypnosis to say that hey, this is that. Um, uh, the brother finally shows up. He's an ass. Uh, that's basically... I can say that about his entire character for the entire movie. During every scene he's in, he's an ass. He's either um, inconsiderate or he's just juvenile. Um, I think there's like this one scene where like he even matters. Uh, two scenes. I'll give you two scenes with him that even matter. I'll talk about them later. They'll, it'll come up. Um... And that's what I mean, that where he matters, it's like he's, he's unavoidable. You could literally remove him from most of the movie, except for, I think, two scenes, and it would be fine. Um, maybe three. You could make an argument for three. Uh, let's see. At the dinner table, uh, we're embarrassing the, the girl. And I say the girl, meaning his girlfriend, Chris's girlfriend, because I really don't think we got her name through most of the movie. Maybe the officer said it, but... I was too busy hating him. Um, but we're embarrassing her with past stories. Uh, his, her brother, I think, tells one where the, a guy kisses her and she pukes. Um, brother really zeroes on Chris's genetic makeup. Like, it becomes a very obvious thing. And, like, he plays it off like he's used to it. Where, like, they're kind of, like, having an event out of having a black guy in the house. And, and making a point to have black... Uh, commentary in their conversation which to me is really rude um it's like like yeah yeah jackie robinson was black what does that add to the conversation um if you happen to be talking about great black sports heroes fine but normally doesn't really add much to a conversation on um or mapping the human genome or, or jurassic park I mean, I'm just things you talk about. Um, 
so do 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 up in the bedroom bow, chicka, bow, wow. Chris the girl gets upset on Chris's behalf because her family's a bunch of rich white douchebags um, she compares them to the cop uh, Chris is pretty nonchalant about the whole thing he's probably seen it before he's probably gone through it before um, I've heard from friends in past where it's like uh, it's something you get used to when uh, you're a black guy uh, dates a white chick or vice versa. Like you, it's it's just something you have to get into first, and then like you're used to it, which doesn't make it right, but it is what it is. What it is in our modern day society. I say, I say, a modern day society, boy. Well, foghorn leghorn for no reason. Uh, <laughs> um, so late at night, Chris goes out for a smoke because why not? He's got to have a flaw, right? Um, and the gardener dude, black, black guy, runs right at him out of the woods. Uh, and I'm telling you, that guy would have got a boot to the face. Um, but he veers away at the very last possible second. Like, he's running laps, and that just, Chris just happened to be standing on the corner of his lap. Um, and, and I can't, I can't give you a reason for that. Even knowing what happens later, can't give you a reason for that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so, bleh, um, he kind of like turns to leave and stops and he sees the, the black woman standing inside who looks like she's staring at him, but we cut inside and she's l admiring her reflection in the, in the mirror. Um, so she can't actually see Chris. But Chris gets creeped out nonetheless and goes in. Uh, the mom ambushes him in uh, from the living room. They talk about his smoking. Uh, they talk about his mother. She tries to hypnotize him. And he basically goes paralyzed. Um, he's able to scratch at the the wood on the chair or the, or the armrest. Whatever you want to call it. Um, but like he, he really can't get anything more than like a convulse... Uh, going um, uh, she tells him to sink and wow did they nail this perspective because uh, he drops into like a subspace and it's literally as if like his view um, falls away it, uh, what's happening in the real world becomes a distance th thing and he now has to deal with a sub reality inside his own mind type thing um, so uh, it, it essentially looks like reality is on TV and he's in a living room made up of uh, strands of dreams. <laughs> it's the best way I can think to put it. Uh, let's see. But he wakes up in bed. Um, his phone is unplugged and dead as in uncharged. So he goes outside because that's what we do um, and talks to the dude cutting wood, Walter. Uh, the dude apologizes to Chris for the running. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I, it's still bizarre. Um, in the bedroom, Chris talks to, to his girlfriend about Walter. Um, they mentally prepare for meeting all the, the party guests for Grandpa, because it's Grandpa's birthday. Yeah, or whatever his event is. I can't even remember. Um, so at the party, um, now... We watched this over on Rabbit Slash Camera, and we, we had some discussions during the movie. Uh, there's a whole thing about limos with white people inside that, like, it totally went past me until they explained it to me. So I'm going to take a time, I'm going to take a time to explain it here as well. So as the limos are arriving, black stretch limousines, because that's what <coughs> fancy white people ride around in, I guess. Uh, and you would think fancy, like, or not fancy, but, like, affluent uh, rich people would have, like, crazy uh, unique colors. But for some reason, poor people like to stand out and rich people like to conform. I don't know what it is. Um, but, uh, so there's a metaphor there going on with white people being inside the black limousines. It's white people writing uh, black people in the movie, um, if you will. <laughs> and we're almost there, like, movie-wise, so, eh, I'm okay with it. 
Um, but all the strangers are super happy to meet Chris. They ask very strange questions. They are not subtle at all about, like, how's it feel to be black? Um, stupid shit like that. Uh, he approaches the, like, the one other black guy at the party he can find, and it's the kidnapped guy from the beginning of the movie. And he doesn't act... <sighs> There's so many bad choices I can make for my next word. I'm going to say black, um... But I'm going to say black in the way that Chris expects him to be black. Because Chris recognizes the guy. He thinks he's a guy from his old neighborhood. So he should be acting, let's say, more urban. Uh, and not like some affluent, rich wasp. Uh, which is how he's acting. <clears throat> um, and he's married to an older white lady. Um, and he kind of acts like an older white guy. Like, if we're, if we're going to be just, just the kind sign of the kind side of racist about it. That's what it is. Um, uh, he goes to sit on a bench and Chris meets a, a blind art dealer. Ooh. Um, uh, inside the, or Chris ends up going inside the house. He goes upstairs and everyone stops and listens. It's one of the creepiest things I've seen. And we watched Cure for Wellness last week. It's one of the creepiest things I've seen in a long time. It is super fucking creepy to see very normal stuff happen in a very strange context. Um, and to me, at least, watching the black guy walk upstairs is not a moment for three rooms of pe people to hush, immediately stopping their conversation, and pay attention. Um... So the girlfriend ends up coming and looking for him because obviously he's not where they everyone expected him to be. Um, Chris finally calls his TSA friend Wyatt, and uh, Wyatt ends up foreshadowing that everyone's been hypnotized. Um, <laughs> all kinds of conspiracy stuff. Uh, the black maid confronts him about uh, her moving his things. Um, and she obviously has a control problem. Like, she is very much fighting for control. Uh, to the point where she starts crying. Mal and mouths the word help. Um, or it could have been get out. But uh, we're pretty sure it was help. Based on the discussion we had. Um, back outside, Chris is introduced to several more people. Uh, and has the other black dude talk for him about being black. Because why wouldn't you do that? And why wouldn't they be talking to the other three black people about being black and not just Chris? I'm just for saying. Um, so he sort of really badly deflects. Um, and then for some reason, Chris decides to take a picture and not a video of uh, the guy. A video would have been much help more helpful. Um, but he takes a, a picture of the guy answering the question... And then has the flash set on, which I don't know why the flash would be on, because by default it should be, especially him as a photographer, it should be on as needed, and it, there's no way that setup needed light. <laughs> Unless the camera's racist, and it's a black guy, so it wanted to add light. Maybe. Maybe the camera was racist. That actually sounds a lot more probable thinking back on things. Um, or maybe the movie wanted the camera to be racist. Um, so, regardless, his flash goes off, um, and the other guy ends up gaining lucidity. Um, so he kind of, like, looks around, he looks at himself, he realizes something's different, and he kind of charges at Chris, and he yells uh, for Chris to get out. Uh, his nose starts bleeding, um, and they kind of take him away. Um, in the house, uh, a little bit later, he's acting normal again. Uh, and then um, Chris, and I think his girlfriend goes with him. Yeah. Uh, goes out to clear his head. Um, and she's doing such a great job as her handler. This is the first point where it becomes overtly clear. Because it's a little obvious earlier on that she's so on his side about everything. She's so supportive throughout the movie um, to the point where like she's getting upset for him and causing problems on his behalf. 
uh, when she doesn't need to, um, per se. So, um, she is just supporting and manipulating him just right, just so, the entire time. Um, oh, man. Um, so, it turns out, like, the old people are playing bingo while they go for this walk, and it's a silent auction. Granted, and they're using bingo cards to do it, so, granted, there's no talking, so nobody can hear what's over here, what's happening, but they're also not calling out fucking numbers, um, to, to my knowledge. Maybe they were, and maybe I, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, yeah, it turns out her name's Rose, so outside Chris and Rose are chatting away, um... And she finally seconds his idea to leave because it was his idea. So by playing the, the proper handler, she has to support him. Even if um, supporting him means that she has to agree that they leave. It doesn't mean they're going to leave, but she has to agree to it. Um, so in the house, people or other people are leaving. Uh, the black people are acting weird. It's the best way I can describe it, I'm sure. Um, the brother's super weird and playing a ukulele, so fuck him. <laughs> uh, oops. Oops. Uke. That made finding my place really easy. Um, the parents are acting weird. Um, for being relatively cool, they're, they're acting very weird. Uh, so inside, they're talking to Wyatt again, and Wyatt calls an eyes, eyes wide shut party. <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie, it has uh, a bunch of rich upper class white people playing in masquerade, um, <laughs> and they're basically all banging each other. But um, so Wyatt tells Chris to leave, um, but he does, and he does kind of identify the other guy, uh, which is the purpose of, the, of taking the picture in the first place. Is that he sent it to Wyatt. Um, they immediately start packing to leave, which is probably the uh, smartest bet they've or smartest thing they've done all movie, or Chris has done all movie anyways. Uh, but as he's packing to leave, and I don't know what compelled him to open that box that wasn't his. Maybe he was checking to see if it was Rose's. Uh, but it's a whole box of pictures, which I don't know why this exists. Um, and it's full of pics of her with black guys. And then one with her with a black girl who happens to be the maid uh, that he found earlier. So it becomes this really weird reveal of, like, um, he's just a trophy boy to her. Um, it's a serial killer trophy box as far as I'm concerned. And he knows about it. So now he has to leave. And he's even insisting they both go, which is... Kind of him, but the whole family's acting weird. The dad's talking weird shit. Uh, Rose is pretending to look for the car keys. And the brother, this is one of the scenes, the brother swings a lacrosse stick like an axe at him. Um, it's just such an off-putting, weird moment. Uh, and it wasn't just me. There was like five other people in chat at the time that all thought he had he was holding an axe. And, like, it wasn't a lacrosse stick. That it was something, like, some kind of real weapon. Um, obviously, it's a very overt f uh, metaphor for him being uh, in danger. Threatened, if you will. Um, Rose finally admits to not being able to give him the keys. And I think you know that. Uh, Chris charges the brother. Mom taps the cup. And Chris goes slack. Uh, they move him downstairs for a procedure. Uh, and she, uh, Rose tells him that she, he was one of her favorites, which I don't know what to do with that phrase. Like you were one of my favorites. I was your favorite. What victim? You love tricking me the most. You wish you hadn't tricked me. What, what is the, what is the procedure there? Like for that context, I don't know. I'm losing my mind over it. She's crazy. And I tell you, like, I'll, I'll mention it later. Like, well, I had some theories about her. Oh, man. Um, so, back to reality. Uh, Wyatt can't reach uh, Chris. Even the, and even the dog's upset about this at this point. Um, back in the, the house, Chris wakes up in a room. He's strapped to a chair. And there's a creepy darehead over the, the 
the uh, TV. Um, and it's an old TV, like an old boot tube, like from the 50s almost. Um, and there's this epic score. The movie, the music in this is actually really great. They really knew how to punctuate uh, the scenes as it needed it. Um, really, I really can't recommend... Uh, I can't recommend... How do you recommend the music for this without... I can't recommend this movie enough, and the score is one of the things that makes that recommendation happen. Um, so a, documentar a documentarian... A documentary starts up on the TV, and it's an old white guy talking about Chris's superiority a as part of the black race. Um, sure, why not? He indicates that Chris would... Uh, join the family uh, at the police station uh, Wyatt ends up talking to the police shows the missing guy he knows reports Chris missing he actually claims uh, the rich white people are brainwashing people for slavery this is a real thing he says to the police um, <laughs> to the uh, the great payoff of her of the, of the detective going to get her friends so that and having them repeat it for them. Which, everything he says is actually plausible. That's the scariest part about this movie, is other than, like, writing other people, everything else is possible in this movie. Um, so for him to make these claims, with the barest amount of evidence, uh, and not have any follow-up is, uh, is baffling to me. But, it's what it is. Um, let's see, uh... Back at the apartment, or at a apartment, I don't know whose it is, Rose ends up talking to Wyatt. Uh, and she is a shitty liar. Like, for someone who is such a sociopath uh, and, and spends her life tricking people, um, she doesn't get the timeline right. Uh, she's just a big sociopath about the whole thing. Um, and then Wyatt puts her on hold to try to record things. And then she starts hitting on him, uh, accuses him of having feelings... And I can't figure out, is, is it to work him as a target? Is it to put him off? Because uh, he freaks out a little bit. And he, he claims that she's good. That, like, she uh, must have figured out what he was going to do and then and deflected it. Because he ends up hanging up on her. Um, whereas, this at this point, for sure, I, I was sure of it, that she was, that she was hypnotized too. That she's just programmed at this point to, uh, if she is not currently handling somebody to find someone to handle and so her instincts just kicked in on Wyatt like they, she was going to try to take in Wyatt too um, no self preservation there but it is what it is um, I think she's hypnotized I, I still think that even at the end of this I'll, I'll get there um, but in the basement uh, the blind art dealer talks to Chris through the television specifically about Phase 2 uh, in the basement. Then about Phase 3, it's about him writing Chris. Um, and, and there's a, a little excerpt of conversation here. Why black people? Uh, maybe the superior body? Black is in fashion. Um, and the thing that it comes down to is that he wants his eyes. He doesn't care what Chris looks like he cares what Chris, how Chris sees because Chris is a semi successful photographer uh, you got to keep in mind um, so in the operating room they prep uh, old blind white guy for surgery the brother goes to fetch Chris uh, and he does a shitty job just overall he does a shitty job of everything and this is the other series of scenes that uh, if you want to if you want to expand it a little bit fine um where he matters but chris grabs ends up grabbing a bocce ball and kills him with that or knocks him out at least um and it turns out chris had cotton in his ears so like he didn't respond to any of the the programming or anything like that uh to knock him out um but he could see so he knew when to give the signals um, as if he was hypnotized. Um, in the hallway, Chris uses the deer head to kill Dad, which I thought was a nice, clever twist. Uh, so now there's no one left to finish the procedure, and the blind white guy uh, has his head open. In the kitchen, the black maid runs away from Chris because 
we figured out that she's actually some white lady or white person could be a guy in there we don't know um, who's actually riding the maid uh, the living room office Chris meets mom it's like a weird little video game where it's like this gauntlet at the end of like things to overcome um, but he manages to catch her off guard so she, he can race her for the teacup and smash it um, she stabs him through the hand and he takes it um, like he really does a good job with it and not only does he kill her with the thing because I don't remember what it was that she uses to stab him she does it with it still in his hand so he takes his whole hand uh, with like a blade or something in it and sticks the blade into her to, to kill her um, really cool way to do it oh man let's see uh by the time he reaches the front door, the brother comes back because we always have that that stare or that cliche of, of the villain coming back for one last scare. Um, and he tries to choke out Chris. Chris stabs him uh, and then kick stomps him to death. <laughs> Upstairs, uh, Road Rose's um, binging, not googling, binging black dudes. She's trying to find another target. I'm telling you that she's not. She's not, like, she's not well, first off. She's definitely a sociopath. The question is whether or not she's just naturally like that and she's a demented freak or if she uh, has been hypnotized to be like that and is really acting against her will. Um, and it changes the perspective of the ending that way. And they could have done a different ending with her being programmed because uh, the evidence points to her not being programmed. Uh, but outside, Chris hits the black maid with a car, and he's a nice enough guy. He bothers to pick her up and put her in the front seat, um, and she attacks him. The car crashes. Chris wakes up, and Rose is shooting at the car, because why not? Uh, really, like, why would, would she do? Why wouldn't she do that? And then she sicks Grandpa on him, which I don't know why she's using Grandpa as an attack dog. It could be another perspective thing where uh, it, she's still treating the black guy as a lesser, um, even though it's grandpa. I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm out of, <laughs> I'm out of arrows in the quiver for this. Um, <coughs> Chris ends up using his phone flash to bring uh, Grandpa Lucid. Uh, grandpa ta Walter takes the gun and shoots Rose, and then shoots himself. Uh, which I guess makes sense. If we're being honest, it just makes sense. Uh, Rose ends up going for the gun. Chris takes it away from her and then just chokes her. And she's such a crazy sociopath that part of me wishes she had played Harley Quinn. Um, she's beautiful about it. Um, maybe she can play Poison Ivy coming up. That would be hot. Um, but she... As he's choking her, because he's not doing a good job because she's able to talk, she tells him that she loves him, um, and then she smiles at him as he chokes her. And what they do in the bedroom is their business. But he, he ends up giving up uh, out of nostalgia or, or sympathy or whatever. But the police show up finally, um, and it's a black guy with blood everywhere, <laughs> a shotgun, uh, <laughs> and a poor hurt white bitch. So... <laughs> Immediately, he's super concerned, and she's, um, she's super hopeful. Um, but it turns out it's Wyatt, because uh, he pieced everything together and found him. Um, so Chris gets in his car, and they drive off, and they leave Rose to die alone and sad in her white superiority. And again, I'll maintain, I'm not saying that you can't have this perspective, you can't enjoy this perspective. Um, or it's how it actually is, maybe. Who cares? Um, but to me, it's it's the fact that they're rich. Um, and I, we've seen this from other characters uh, who are black but rich. Like, they're crazy, too. Like, money makes people crazy, which is why you shouldn't be able to be allowed to have part of it. There's my, there's my Marxist manifesto moment for the podcast. Jesus. Um... But yeah, it makes you crazy. It makes you do things you, you probably damn well shouldn't. Um, only 40 minutes. Wow. I feel like I've been talking much longer. Um, so that's all I'm going to do for that one. Um, 
But come and join us at Rabbit Slash Camera. I think the next one, one on the lineup for this is A Quiet Place. Um, and, of course, uh, we're doing Kick-Ass, Kick-Ass 2, Punisher coming up. Um, over the movie clubs at Rabbit Slash Camera, we're doing a couple different things. But until uh, you see us next time, have a nice day. This is from us here at Hashtag We Are Movie Club. This has been Scary Movie Squad. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go ahead and click the annotations, and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.